Welcome. In this final lecture of our series of lectures, this module on uh, creating a winning business plan, I'll review for a little bit the sorts of things that myself and other people that look at business plans like to see when we look at a business plan and what, whenever we see it, maybe gives us a little bit of buzz and makes us uh, a little bit skeptical of what the business is trying to do and what it's trying to accomplish. As, as, um, as I have mentioned it a few times in this lecture, there in this uh, module, uh, the business plan is really largely about presenting a clear picture of the passion and enthusiasm, excitement of an opportunity to create a business. The fact that it is laid out with specifics is a starting point, and no one really expects that those specifics will, will unfold as expected or as described in detail. But that they, what they do want to make sure is that one has thought it through has looked at the details, is not naive, has a professional perspective, and is willing to and expecting to learn. And you have milestones that you're looking to, to accomplish that will take risk out of your business. That's what we're trying to accomplish. And so everything, when you think about it, someone evaluates a, a business plan, they're reacting to it holistically as well as specifically. And so what are the, some of the things that really get you excited about a business whenever you see the plan. One thing is an exciting team. People that have done this before, that have experience in that area, that are very articulate about the opportunity, clearly are in the business. They're willing to work hard on the business. They're making a personal commitment to the business. And it looks like they have what it takes to succeed. You want a business that's very lean, people that are doing multiple tasks, multiple roles, the startup team is clearly fully engaged. There's not a lot of, uh, quote, support personnel to answer the phones and the like, but rather people that are there are working on getting done what needs to be done all the time. You want focus, focus on a particular product, that first product launch, not a whole bunch of things going on. What's that first thing? It's gonna start the business and get it going, catalyze, get a catalyst going for the rest of the business and how it will grow. Important is that there's a clear articulation of an opportunity. There is going to be growth. People are going to buy this. This is something that is going to happen. This team looks like the team that can do it, but for sure, someone is going to do it. There is a real opportunity here, and there's a way to fight off the competition and keep them out, or keep them away. Every plan requires you to believe something is going to happen. This is a leap of faith. You want to make as few of those leaps of faith as possible. For example, if you've never done this before as an entrepreneur, you're a first timer, the investor or the partners have to make a leap of faith that you're going to succeed. So that means the rest of the plan should be airtight. There's a good market, there's a good opportunity, you have the assets, you have the financing, all the other stuff is airtight I make one leap of faith that you're the guy to do it or you're the woman to do it. Or if you've done it before and then there's a new market you're trying to create or a new product, I'm not sure I can make the product work, but boy, if it does, there's going to be a market. Then there's the leap of faith that you can make the product work. So there's only one or two things that you really have to jump to and say, all right, I buy it. I believe it. I'll invest in that. I'll take that chance, right? You don't want to take a chance that is five different chances. You want one thing or maybe two that you're saying, I'm going to take a risk on. And of course, that's where you want your milestones. You want people that are going to be sharpening their pencils, paying a lot of attention to detail. People that are going to be able to stand back, look at the situation objectively, not get caught up in their own egos, <clears throat> but look at it objectively. Um, you want people that are building something new that has, you know, that there's an opportunity that's clear and developing, not somebody that's way out in front, the pioneer, not somebody that's creating something for the first time that's never been used before, um, like somebody that wants to build a, um, a new kind of, uh, of energy source, like, like fusion or whatever that no one has really cracked the code on yet, somebody that's way out front. You don't want to invest in them. You want to invest in people that the technology maybe is there, but it has not yet been productized in some way. And investors really like 
recurring revenue. There's two kinds of revenue. Revenue that you have to win every single day. That is, you have to walk out the door if you're selling cars. You have to sell to, to somebody a new car every day. They walk in, you have to sell that car. Whereas if you're leasing cars, you get someone to lease your car every month. The money comes in without you having to resell it. That's recurring revenue. You can engineer recurring revenue into your business model, subscriptions, um, returning customers, loyalty programs. They're all about trying to create recurring revenue. So you want to think about structuring your business along those lines with recurring revenue as well. If you lay all of these things out, good team, lean operation, good focus, one small leap of faith, um, you have a, a clearly a, a plan that is detailed and it's objective and you're building something that's innovative but not necessarily way out there in the front and it's got a re recurring revenue that you can watch build over time that's the kind of plan that's exciting that's the kind of plan that's likely to go to the next level and potentially get investment what is scary when you see a business plan where do those red flags come from people that are overly optimistic they say this is great, everyone's gonna love it, but they don't necessarily have a lot of details about it. They just believe it without any sort of reason to believe it. Or they say, this is gonna catch on in, in two weeks, or I'm gonna open my doors in four weeks, when you know it will take you at least six months to 10 months just to sell the business to the first customer or to build your first product. Or there's assertions that are made about the market, but there's no backup or assertions about the technology or the product, but no backup. This does, it doesn't seem like someone has done their homework and their details. Um, the, the business plan has numbers in it that you ask questions and the answers are vague. There's no clear assumptions behind them about who your market is, what kind of customers are going to be there. There's just the sense that I'll open my doors and the customers will come. Or if they say, uh, we only need a million dollars or we only need this first $300,000 and that's all we ever need. Because businesses as they grow, when you really understand and do your homework, you realize how much capital you need to continually invest in growth in the business. And the red flag that really, I think, is the one that will sink you every time is if you say, we're so new, we're so different, we really don't have any competitors out there. Um, you'll never get funding with that kind of an attitude because everyone knows if you find a way to make money, someone's coming after you and they're, you're trying to take money from somebody else. And so there's always competition. So you want to keep that in mind. These are the sorts of things that will raise that little red flag in the back of the investor's head and the back of their mind and, and cause them just to say no. They're looking for reasons to say no because actually investors are quite risk averse. Congratulations, that's the end of this module on writing effective business plans. We've talked about how you go about building, building a plan, why you build the plan, and the contents of the business plan. I hope this has been helpful. If there's any questions or discussions, feel free to, to contact me and we can uh, talk through that. Um, and also, as I said, there'll be some separate modules on milestones, on the marketing aspects of business planning, financial aspects of business planning. But for now, I just wanted to thank you for the time and the effort that you've put in. I want to thank you again for, for spending the time and going through this material and, um, and also um, wish you the best in terms of developing your business plans going forward. Hopefully I'll follow up with the future modules and I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.